Hello everyone, welcome back to the Trumpet Daily. What will it take for Americans to wake up to what is happening in this world? Just look at the world we live in today. In Russia, Vladimir Putin is fresh off his public relations triumph at the Sochi Olympics. Just days after the closing ceremonies, Putin ordered combat drills alongside Russia's border with Ukraine. And then over the last two days, there have been reports of Russian troops entering Crimea which is that strategically critical region in southern Ukraine, the peninsula that juts into the Black Sea. Ukraine's interior minister called Russia's action an armed invasion. So Russia's definitely on the march, as we've been repeatedly saying in the last few months. On Wednesday, they even managed to dock a warship in Cuba. Neither Cuba nor Russia has offered any explanation for why this warship is there, but there it is a little over 100 miles from the United States mainland. Speaking of Cuba, this week a sitting U.S. Senator actually delivered a speech on the Senate floor in which he praised Cuba's communist and socialist programs. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of the direction many leaders want America to travel in. The Castro regime in Cuba, by the way, is helping to prop up the communist dictatorship in Venezuela. And Venezuela, as we mentioned on the last Trumpet Daily, is collapsing under the weight of numerous failed socialist policies. Besides Cuba, Venezuela also has strong ties with Iran. The Venezuelan government has been infiltrated by a number of Hezbollah operatives. Iran has illegally laundered billions of dollars through Venezuelan banks. According to a former official at the State Department, Iran is currently stashing hundreds of millions of dollars in virtually every Venezuelan bank today. Roger Noriega, who is a former U.S. ambassador, said that for those who are trying to implement sanctions against Iran, the situation is a huge blind spot. And it's right here in America's backyard. What Iran is doing in Venezuela and elsewhere should be setting off alarm bells here in America, but it's not. Instead, America is working to lift the sanctions on Iran, to give them more room to operate. If you remember, not too long ago, we were told the, the relief that Iran gets from that Geneva deal in November would be insignificant economically. The president said the total maximum value of this deal is about $6 billion to $7 billion. He said Iran would be uh, allowed to export no more than 1 million barrels of oil per day. And today, Iran is exporting 1.32 million barrels of oil per day. The economic boost amounts to about $20 billion. We're not even a few months into the agreement, and the many promises and assurances have already been exposed as false. Yesterday, Israeli Ambassador Mir Shlomo spoke from this stage and showed how the Geneva deal in November did absolutely nothing to stop Iran from developing the technology it needs to speed up its uranium enrichment. America has actually paved the way for Iran to accelerate its nuclear weapons program. So they're now swimming in cash, they're building nuclear weapons, they're propping up the Assad regime in Syria, infiltrating Venezuela's socialist regime in South America. All of this, all of it is building to a massive explosion and yet most people in America either don't believe it or they don't care. They don't care about it. A few months ago, China decided it, it wanted to expand its airspace and America just quietly stepped aside. China's been antagonizing uh, Japan in a way that the U.S. would never have allowed, even just a few years ago. And then look at North Korea. The United Nations uh, just released a thorough report, very detailed report, about the unbelievable abuse and, and repression that goes on daily in North Korea. It's been going on for more than 60 years, in fact. Thousands, thousands have been enslaved and tortured, raped, executed. Women have been forced to abort babies. But little or nothing is done. Most people don't even think about what's happening in North Korea. Now, a lot's been happening in Germany in recent months as well. German leaders are ready to leave war guilt behind and are preparing to lead the world. That's what we wrote on the cover of our latest Trumpet magazine. 
Germany's working to build up its military. They're ready for action. They're prepared to lead. This week, Chancellor Merkel took uh, her entire cabinet to Israel to strengthen ties between those two nations. And then following those meetings, she headed up to the UK. David Cameron, the, the British Prime Minister, is looking to Merkel to help strengthen Britain's severing ties to the EU. I'll just refer you to a prophecy in Hosea 5 and verse 13, which says, When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jareb, yet could he not heal you nor cure you of your wound. That's a prophecy about Judah or the little nation of Israel today and uh, Britain going to Germany and it's happening. Well, we could go on and on. Iraq is buying weapons from Iran as we reported earlier this week. Afghanistan wants America out by the end of the year and these are two regions America just captured in war, supposedly. And yet, here again, few people care. As George Friedman recently wrote, Americans aren't interested in the world's problems. It's as simple as that. And America's leaders are busy. They're busy downsizing the military, urging law enforcement officers to ignore the law, removing all restrictions to same-sex marriages, legalizing marijuana, printing trillions of dollars, running up the debt, praising communist thugs from the floor of the Senate. The world is shaking, and the United States has drifted into a deep slumber. The Philadelphia Church of God presents The Trumpet Daily. The former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations wrote a, a piece for the Los Angeles Times just a couple of weeks ago, uh, John Bolton, um, and he talked about the, just concentrating on the Middle East region, he talked about how President Obama's uh, policies, uh, if he doesn't change them, are leading to a disaster of epic proportions. Just want to give you a few, a few quotes from that piece. He said, Iran will emerge, this is John Bolton, Iran will emerge more powerful uh, verging on uh, deliverable nuclear weapons as a result of these policies, in other words, while still financing and arming terrorists worldwide. He says Syrian President Bashar Assad seems likely to survive, which is bad enough by itself, but it will be compounded by the uh, affirmation it affords Iranian and Russian strength. Israel will trust Washington even less than now, and ironically, Palestinians will be even more anti-American because Obama will not be able to deliver to them the Israeli concessions he predicted. And so that's what is coming in this man's estimation. If there aren't some changes in the policy, he went on to say in this article, the increasing danger is that only another 9-11, another disaster, will produce the necessary awakening. Only another disaster like 9-11 is going to wake people up, he says. This is John Bolton, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. There is tragedy ahead for our country if we continue on this course. So he's one of few that's sounding the alarm about the forthcoming tragedy. And there's others that are talking about why warnings such as this are being ignored. I, I mentioned there in the monologue George Friedman's article about how Americans just aren't interested. They just don't care about world events. In that Friedman article, he talked about some of the, the topics we brought up at the beginning of the program, the turmoil in Venezuela and the Ukraine and what's happening with Putin and Russia, and how that in years past, this would have aroused intense public concern in the United States but not today, not today. Notice what uh, Friedman said in his article. This is Americans aren't interested in the world's problems. He says, this week, Americans seem to be indifferent to all of them. 
He made that statement after he just rattled off all these things that are happening on the world stage and how that Americans don't seem interested. They don't uh, care much about it. Let's look at Luke 21. We'll just read through a few scriptures here today if you'd like to read along with me. Friedman, not unlike Bolton, suggests that the only way Americans are going to sit up and take note is if circumstances change. That's kind of a sugar-coated way of saying uh, until another disaster hits. That's the only way we're going to wake up. And that's what John Bolton's predicting. Another 9-11. As horrible and as tragic as that day was. Those things are coming again. The Bible prophesies of that. And some few, anyway, some few commentators are beginning to see that that's where we're headed. This is Luke 21 here. And verse 34, it says, And take heed... Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Jesus said, take heed. That day is coming upon us. And it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. Verse 35 goes on and says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. I mean, the whole earth is going to be shaken by these events, by these explosions, shocked at what's happening on this earth. But if you just open your eyes and see what's happening today, I mean, right now, you can feel it building. You can see it building. You know explosions are coming. Verse 36 says, Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watch, Jesus said, and pray. Pray. Combine your watching of world events with prayer. Peter said, watch unto prayer. Watch and pray always because the worst time of suffering is coming upon this earth. Jesus said so in Matthew 24. He said over there in, in Matthew 24, I'll just read it quickly from the screen here. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. When you see these events, you'll know. You should. You should know. You'll know it's right at the doors. If your eyes are open, if you're watching and, and praying. Let's go through a passage here in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, Paul gave a similar warning, as did Jesus Christ in the Gospels there, urging us, admonishing us to open our eyes and to take note of the world we live in. Why are there so many people today that are just saying that it's okay, everything's going to be the same as it's always been? Even as we see these, not just tiny little nations, but major world powers on the march. Massive explosions in places like the Middle East and North Africa where it doesn't take much to trigger a, a massive conflagration of war and struggle. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. See, God is about to intervene. Again, you can go back and look at Matthew 24 on your own time where Jesus said great tribulation is coming and it would be so bad that all flesh would, would end up dead unless God intervened, unless God supernaturally intervened in the affairs of men. And that's what Paul's talking about here, this supernatural intervention. And notice there in verse 2, it, it talks about the coming of Jesus Christ being like a thief coming in the night, totally unexpected. For most people. Verse 3 says, For when they uh, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall uh, not escape. See, there's some sudden destruction coming when you see the diplomats, when you see the peacemakers out there saying that I think we've finally got something that can work here. Look at the Geneva Agreement. <laughs> to take the most recent example. 
or the Oslo agreements going back further between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians back in the early 90s and since that time has Israel had peace? Well it's just been one war after another. That's what God says will happen. This is the way it's prophesied to unfold right before Jesus returns to this earth. Verse 4 says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. I mean, we should see. We should know the time. Like it says in Romans 13, we should know the time that we're living in. Paul said over in that book, Romans 13, that now is the time to wake up. Now is the time. Don't delay. Don't wait any longer. Do something with this. That's God's admonition in these verses and many others like them. Verse 5, it says, You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. God's talking to His people here, people in His true church. Verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. See, watch. Watch unto prayer. Be sober-minded. Be aware of what's happening. Be alert spiritually as to what's happening in this world. Don't be spiritually uh, drunk, the scriptures say, but fill up on God's spirit, God's truth. Verse 7, staying here in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But, verse 8 continues, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, it says, the hope of salvation. Here again, compare this on your own time. Go back and look at Romans 13, verses 11 through 13 there and study these passages. That, Romans 13, 1 Thessalonians 5, these passages we've gone through here today in Luke, Luke 21, Matthew 24 and receive God's admonition, and then follow on that study with a willingness to act. We'll be right back. The book of Revelation reveals startling truth about a recent war in heaven. Satan and his demons have been bound to earth as a result of this angelic battle. Satan knows his time on earth is nearly up, and he is in his worst wrath ever. Many troubles in this world are linked to that event. That war in heaven was a stark turning point on this earth, and these troubles have increased dramatically in just the last few decades. The Bible says the heavens are rejoicing because Satan no longer has access to God's heavenly abode. But what does that mean for the earth? The economic woes of the United States have caused upheaval and uncertainty the world over. Drugs, violence, and even modern slavery envelope this world in startling fashion. Weapons of mass destruction are spreading uncontrollably. All the while, society and the structure of family continue to break down. Most fail to recognize the frightening effects springing from this end-time war in heaven. Though terrible for the moment, the increase of these terrible troubles will be followed by the most inspiring event ever to occur in the universe. Remove the mystery shrouding this recent heavenly war. Visit thetrumpet.com to watch the most recent Key of David episode, End Time War in Heaven. That promo you just saw there was for the, the Key of David that played last weekend on the, the war in heaven. And uh, really, it ties in w perfectly with what we talked about at the top of today's program. I mean, if you want to understand why the world is the way that it is, go back to that program from last week and, and watch it and understand the, the real world that's out there in the spirit realm. And it'll help you understand why this world is going in the direction that it is. Now today, we also just posted the latest uh, program for the Key of David, which incidentally was taped from this stage. It's the first time that uh, the Key of David set moved over to 
to this stage. So certainly take the opportunity this weekend to, uh, to go and watch that new program as well. But if you get a chance, I think it would be great to go back and look at uh, the one we posted for, for last week. This is the booklet I'd like to draw your attention to today, uh, which I think ties in with what we've talked about, uh, all this that's happening around the world, and yet look at America. Most are just asleep, and most are even asleep to the attack that's happening right now on America. You need to, as we've read today, to awaken to what's happening. And this little booklet will help you do that. You can get a free copy of it if you go to thetrumpet.com uh, or you can call the, the number on your screen there. If you'd like to uh, get in touch with an operator and receive a copy of this sooner, uh, then by all means call today and we'll send out a free copy of this little booklet to you. Free of charge, no obligation to you. We want you to have it. We want you to, to begin your study. We want you, we want to help you to open your eyes. So uh, that's at thetrumpet.com or by calling uh, the number on your screen. We thank you for joining us today and we'll see you again next time on The Trumpet Daily.